Hello and welcome to this Facebook Live about the creative economy. Here today we have Programme Director Catherine Chassinit and I'm one of our students, Catherine Morel, Catherine Morel my excuse, <laughs> I'm one of um, our students, uh, Ruth. Perhaps Catherine you could uh, maybe introduce yourself a bit and how perhaps the idea of the programme came about and then perhaps Ruth you could tell us a bit about your background and why you decided to come onto the programme. Okay, so just to make sure, I am Catherine Morel, <laughs> and I am the program director of the MSc Management and Entrepreneurship in the Creative Economy. Um, why this program? Um, because the creative economy and the creative industries, which are at the core of the creative economy, are booming uh, industries. Um, and I think it's important for artists and creatives to find a place in that creative economy, a place where they can live um, sustainable but also um, meaningful lives, professional lives. And I, I think that um, the idea was we would help them uh, acquire a certain competence, a certain number of competencies and skills uh, which would enable them to, to live a decent life in the creative economy. Thank you very much, Member. Well, my name is Ruth Rodriguez, I'm from Mexico. And my background um, is uh, from classical music. I'm a violinist. And I decided to come to this program exactly because of that, because I am looking for an entrepreneurial uh, more field. And I really want to explore my opportunities as an artist to be very, very based on the creative economy and have more um, knowledge about it. Very good. Thank you very much. So part of the program is in Glasgow School of Art, and the program was created in collaboration with the Glasgow School of Art. Catherine, can you tell us more about this content uh, within the Glasgow School of Art? Yeah, so for, for us, it's, uh, it's not only, a, you know, it's not a gimmick in the sense that um, it's not just oh, uh, we are working with the Glasgow School of Art and, um, you know, we go there and, and that's it. No, it's more than that because, as you said, the program was actually designed with the people from the Glasgow School of Art. So the, the, they uh, provide uh, one third of the program uh, in terms of number of credits. And so they designed the modules especially for us and with us, which means that um, that makes the program interesting in the sense of its teaching um, and learning strategy, in the sense that we are mixing um, teaching and learning strategies from a business school, which is where we are, Odensia Business School, but also with um, how you teach in a design school and in an art school, so which enables us to have an interesting hybridation uh, of teaching, if I can say that. So, yeah, thank you for bringing this point, which is very important for us, the fact that we are with Glasgow School of Art. Uh, it, it is a very good relationship um, and uh, I think the students could also, I'm, I'm sure that Ruth could say a few words about the module designs, three module designs have been integrated in the teaching. I don't know whether you wanted to say a little something? Yes, I think it was a very useful tool to learn how to design in a different way. Uh, I've never had the experience before of having this way of thinking and um, it led me to open a lot of different um, ways of thinking about um, how can we research in the field. Very good. And more about that, can you give us a more concrete example, Ruth, of a case study or project you guys have worked on during the program, either here in Nort or Glasgow? One of our projects was in Finhorn in, in Scotland. We had the opportunity to travel there. And at this point, we were divided into teams. <clears throat> we were working on the theme of heritage. We were um, we had a big project about uh, the heritage of Scotland. So uh, we had to interview people, we had to do cultural props, and we had to use this technique called design thinking. So it was a very new um, way of thinking for us to, to research and to make a, a, a good project. We had to come up with, um, with an idea for an event based on heritage. So it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. We had lots of fun in, in Scotland and we learned about the heritage of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I would just add that, you know, it was, what was interesting as well was that when we went to, to Scotland, we were mixed with uh, students from other design schools from Copenhagen, from uh, Germany, Cologne in Germany, 
from Singapore. So there was very much an ambi design studio ambiance, which is something that obviously we are not used to here in, in, in the business school. So that was, I also think, part of the experiment experience. One of the questions we often get in mm -hmm. by our prospective student is, who's the typical student? Tell us a bit more, Catherine, about, you know, what kind of students uh, are on the program? Okay, well, I think Ruth is probably the best example of the kind of students we are looking for, um, which I, I have to admit is a bit of a challenge uh, for a business school because we are looking for people who have got a creative background. So that's not our kind of usual, um, you know, kind of audience. So we are looking for anybody who, is, uh, who has been doing um, a creative, uh, who has got a creative background. So somebody who, like Ruth, is a musician, for instance, either classical or not classical musician, mm -hmm. but people who have done uh, maybe design, maybe people who have done uh, creative writing, uh, people who might have studied uh, fashion, I'm, I'm trying to think arch architecture. Uh, so anybody who has got a kind of creative background and education, or um, somebody who might not have a, a creative background, but who has got a, a kind of creative um, project. So, for instance, if you are somebody who studied law uh, and, um, you know, on the side you have got a, a business, uh, a DJing business, for instance, we would love to hear from you because obviously you already combine the kind of hybrid skills and competencies that we are looking for. So I, I guess what I would like to say is that we are trying to mix as many backgrounds as possible because we believe that it's a, a source of creativity as well. And so, and you know, I think uh, people who are listening to us should remember that uh, Odensea Business School is trying to hybrid as much as possible competencies and skills. And I think the program is very much, um, you know, the, that's the essence of the program. So. Yeah, so that's, that's the kind of uh, profiles we are looking for. And what are some of the <coughs> career out outcomes after the program? Um, where do students see the set go in? Mm -hmm. And um, what does the program prepare them to do afterwards? Well, I guess, um, you know, uh, we do what, uh, you know, it says on the team somehow. So we've got the management aspect, we've got entrepreneurship. So maybe let's start with entrepreneurship. What do we mean by entrepreneurship? So I guess, you know, the usual uh, understanding is people are going to set up their business. And it's true in the group, we've got a few people who have got really strong ideas already of a business that yeah. they would like to. We are one, you're yeah. one of them. And very different ideas. And very different ideas. So Ruth uh, is obviously thinking of uh, a new kind of music agency. I'm sure she can tell us a little bit about it. Uh, um, then we've got people who are thinking of, uh, you know, uh, setting up residencies, um, in rural areas, for instance, something which is still a bit rare, but that's a, a very strong idea. Uh, then we've got people who want to organize, you know, events or, or, again in rural areas. So, um, you know, these are kind of typical one, one stream of people on the course. They have an idea uh, which is linked to the creative industries. They want to develop it and we are supporting them in, you know, taking this idea further. So that's the first thing. But being entrepreneur is not only about setting up a business. It can also be about being entrepreneurial. So I know that um, you know one of our uh, one of our students, Janine, who is actually next to, to us, <laughs> um, is very interested um, in, in working in uh, bigger organizations, uh, cultural, creative organizations, where you can be entrepreneurial. You know, now if you work in a museum, for instance. You need to be entrepreneurial. You need to go and get money. You need to go and organize crowdfunding, whatever. So we are get, trying to give the confidence to our students that they can do that even within the frame of a big organization. Then there are and people sometimes think that I'm trying to uh, elude the questions or not to answer the questions. I also think that there are jobs that are going to emerge which are not ready, which are not there yet. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to uh, one of our students, Pierre Alexandre, yesterday, and I was—we were talking about the fact that increasingly we've got, you know, new um, spaces which are emerging as well, which are not really working spaces, which are not, you know, um, spaces or your, you know, familiar spaces or your your house or whatever. So we've got lots of kind of social spaces which are emerging, 
um, where you work, where you entertain, where you meet people. And to actually run these kind of spaces, you need um, people with really interesting competencies and skills because you need to be able to make people meet and that these meetings are going to, to come to fruition uh, as you know, kind of projects in the creative industries or the creative economy. So you need really interesting skills. And I believe that the course is also preparing for that kind of careers, i.e. people who are links, intermediaries, uh, bridges between various worlds, and in particular, the worlds of you know, arts and, and, and business. Um, so that's, that's another, another you know, a stream of uh, jobs, I think. Um, and also, that's also something which is very dear to us, in the team uh, who are teaching on this MSc. So we have got, you know, Philippe, for instance, who is uh, teaching arts-based methods, because we do believe that artists and creatives can bring new ways of doing things in businesses and organizations. And I think there is another stream of jobs there which are going to, uh, you know, to come quite strong in the next 10 years, where basically artists and creatives are going to help businesses and organizations to rethink the way they do things. It's a bit of a long answer, um, but uh, I think it gives you quite a, a range and panel of the jobs that we, we hope the students can get, thanks to VS and MSc. Indeed, and Ruth, maybe you want to tell us a bit about what you are thinking of? Well, I came here because I was very interested about the man management um, and also because I want to open up my own business. And as an artist, I don't have a business background. I don't know anything about how to manage, how to uh, like invest, how to finance. So I knew that this was going to give me a little bit of that side, but also was going to give me a push of how to to be an entrepreneur and how to have the courage and passion to do this. And maybe sometimes artists are afraid of doing something because we don't know about that. But this gave us the opportunity to, to know a little bit more about it and just to go for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I guess it's a, you, you have used a very important word uh, for us, which is passion. I think mm -hmm. that we get also, and you know, we, when you ask me, uh, what kind of profile we are looking for. We are looking for passionate people. Passion is very important. Passion for, obviously, your art and, and what you, you believe in, but also passion to, to make a, a change. You know, I think, you know, what I, I would say as well is when I look at, you know, people who are coming on the program and looking at the profiles, I'm looking at people who have got something to say through their practice and through their entrepreneurial projects. People who are, you know, keen to develop. I know that your music uh, project, for instance, is also because you care for the community and you want to bring music to community. So I think artists and creatives are passionate people. They are passionate about their art, but they are passionate about making sure that this is going to reach um, over people, over audiences, and that they can make a difference. So that passion is very important. So if you are passionate, come and join us. <laughs> Indeed. And talking about passion, tell us a bit about the existence of some of that passion in the city of Nantes. Because the program is mainly in Nantes. Mm -hmm. Tell us some of, uh, tell us a bit about the the networking opportunities available to students and, and what it's like to study the creative economy in Nantes. Yeah, that's a very good question actually, because um, mm -hmm. I, I know that sometimes people are trying to push me into developing the program in Paris, for instance, which would make sense. I mean, obviously Paris is like a capital city, <laughs> you know, lots of cultural organizations there. Um, I'm, I'm a bit reluctant. I really love the fact that we are in Nantes and I, I, I want to stay in Nantes because we are, we, we are, well, first of all, we, our, our campus is the media campus. Um, so which is right um, in the, on the Isle of Nantes. So those, for those of you who listen to us and who know Nantes, uh, there is a, a creative cluster, a creative ecosystem, which is taking, uh, which is emerging and which is, uh, uh, you know, a, as we speak, is uh, coming in, in, into uh, being. It's a vast project. Um, and we are very proud and very happy to be right in the middle of that project. Um, so the media campus enable us to network re really rapidly with all the orga organiz organizations uh, around us. So 
Um, if I may mention them, we, you know, we worked with Trampolino, for instance, we work with Stereolux, which are both leading organizations in the world of music uh, and uh, contemporary music, um, uh, you know, here in, in Nantes. Um, we are developing uh, lots of links with smaller startups, so architectural startups, um, design startups. Um, so we we are really proud, and um, you know, last week, for instance, uh, we were right in the middle of a big event uh, to which we participated, which was called the Entreprendre la Culture, which was organized by the Ministry of Culture here in France. So you see, uh, they come to us. Huh? Um, uh, and um, that was the opportunity for us to meet all the major actors in the region, in the city and in the region, um, in terms of um, arts, creativity, entrepreneurship. So we, we are very, and there is a very strong eco digital ecosystem as well in Nantes. So I, I, to me, it's the perfect place to be, and Nantes has had a cultural policy, which has been very strong for the last 20 years. Um, and so now we are kind of seeing the results of that strong cultural policy. Um, and you know, we were talking about Glasgow School of Art earlier mm -hmm. on. Um, Glasgow was a very strong city of culture in, 19, in the 1990s. Um, and um, we are really looking at what we are doing here in Nantes, because you can draw parallel between the, the, the two cities, how cities which used to be shipyards, you know, cities, have been transformed, literally, uh, and regenerated by the cultural and creative industries. So, in a way, it's a perfect place to be. And uh, if I can say that if for the future, we are looking at other partners maybe to join us. And it would make sense to have similar kind of cities which have been going through this regeneration through cultural and creative industries. Great. And Ruth, what is it like for an international student from Mexico? We get a lot of interest from Mexican students. What is it like for an international student like you in the city of Nantes? Well, for me, it has been a great experience. Uh, first of all, the city is beautiful. It's amazing. Um, it's very clean. It's very safe. You know, for me, coming all the way here, I wanted a safe city because you're alone. It was my first time being here. So that's a very important factor for me. Uh, networking is very important too. Everywhere you go, there's international students. I was a little bit afraid because I don't speak French. So that was a very, uh, something that I was afraid of. But almost everyone has, speaks a little bit of English. So it, it's great to meet new friends every night. You go out, it, there's a great uh, student ambience. Like, uh, there's a lot of activities. Audencia has a great international uh, team. Uh, they organize different activities. So there's always something you, you can do. There's different museums, different galleries, concerts. Uh, not, I think, is the perfect city for a student to come. And you never get bored. It's, it's amazing. And tell us a bit about some of the associations in the city of Nantes you're involved in. Yes, I'm involved in a Mexican association. I was very lucky because not every international student has this opportunity. And I have a little bit of Mexico with me here. So it's great. It's a great association. They have tons of activities. So I feel home, but in France. So it, it's great. Mm -hmm. Great. And you, you performed recently? Yes, I've performed with them uh, three times, I think. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, well, Mexicans have lots of parties. So. <laughs> I perform in the parties, um, traditional Mexican music. And well, that, that's given me a chance to network too and to meet other people that's interested about my, my field and there's interested about my uh, professional work. And so it's a great opportunity to meet different people. Mm -hmm. I think there is a great uh, nightlife, and I'm not talking about experience, because <laughs> <laughs> but I think from what I hear from the students, there is a great uh, nightlife. So. There is a great nightlife, and, no, and, uh, and safe, it's so, mm -hmm. so that's good. The, the public transport is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Amazing. Mm -hmm. The tram here is perfect. You can get anywhere um, less than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. so. so that's very convenient, and yes. we are right in the city center. Also. And it's very funny because uh, you were talking about the environment. So it's not only cultural, well, it's cultural and creative industries, but re really recently, uh, just across from the media campus, where, where, where there was a new uh, 
urban uh, winery which has opened. So you see, that's, uh, that, 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 that the kind of businesses that we see happening around us, uh, which is uh, very, very interesting. Um, Thank you very much uh, to both of you. Um, I think this is going to be very useful for some of our prospective students. In any way, they can get in touch with us by email if That's they right, yeah. would like to ask any further questions at internationaladodensia.com. Yeah, or they can reach me directly at uh, C for Catherine, Morel, M O R E L, at odensa.com, and I will answer their, their queries. And they can obviously get in touch through me. Add to the to the students, no uh, problem. The current students. Uh. And another way to know if you have any questions, you can access the Facebook page. We have a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram page. That's right. Uh, it's controlled by students. So if you have any question, you can just send us a message. It's Saudencia uh, underscore M E C. Thank you very much, and I'm sure they'll be in touch very soon. Pleasure. Thank